Good morning. Welcome to St. Pius, to this Holy Communion and worship of the Eucharist outside of Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray to me, to Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Please be seated for today's first reading. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. Brothers and sisters, Realize that it is those who have faith who are children of Abraham. Scripture would saw in advance that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, foretold the good news to Abraham, saying, Through you shall all the nations be blessed. Consequently, those who have faith and are blessed, along with Abraham who had faith. <clears throat> For all who depend on works of the law are under a curse. For it is written, Cursed be everyone who does not persevere in doing all the things written in the book of the law, and that no one is justified before God by the law is clear, for the one who is righteous by faith will live. But the law does not depend on faith, rather the one who does these things will live by them. Christ ransomed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed be everyone who hangs on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might be extended to the Gentiles through Christ Jesus, so that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> the Lord will remember his covenant forever. The, the Lord, Lord will remember, remember his, covenant his covenant forever. forever. I will give thanks to the Lord with all my heart in the company and assembly of the just, Great are the works of the Lord, exquisite in all their delights. The, the Lord, Lord will, will remember, remember his, his covenant, covenant forever. forever. Majesty and glory are his work, and his justice endures forever. He has won renown for his wondrous deeds. Gracious, gracious and merciful is the Lord. The Lord will remember, will remember his, his covenant, covenant forever. forever. He has given food to those who fear him. He will forever be mindful of his covenant. He has made known to his people the power of his works, giving them the inheritance of the nations. The, the Lord, Lord will, will remember, remember his, his covenant, covenant forever. forever. Alleluia, alleluia. The prince of this world will now be cast out. And when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw all to myself, says the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. When Jesus had driven out a demon, some of the crowd said, by the power of Beelzebub, the prince of demons, he drives out demons. Others, to test him, asked him for a sign from heaven. But he knew their thoughts, said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself will be laid to waste, and house will fall against house. 
And if Satan is divided against himself, how will his kingdom stand? For you say that is Beelzebub that I drive out demons. If I then drive out demons by Beelzebub, by whom do your own people drive them out? Therefore, they will be your judges. But if it is by the finger of God that I drive out demons, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. When a strong man, fully armed, guards his palace, his possessions are safe. But when one stronger than he attacks and overcomes him, he takes away the armor and on which he relied and distributes the spoils. Whoever is not with me is against me, and whoever does not gather with me scatters. When an unclean spirit goes out of someone, it roams through the arid regions searching for rest, but finds none. And it says, I shall return to my home from which I came. But upon returning, it finds it swept clean and put in order. Then it goes and brings back seven, seven other spirits, more wicked than itself, who move in and dwell there. The last condition of that man is worse than the first. The Gospel of the Lord. Sitting there listening to the first reading, I, I have no idea why this popped into my head, but we've all seen those commercials where the credit card company says, what's in your wallet? And I got to thinking, instead of what's in your wallet, what's in your heart? What is in your heart? If listening to this gospel today from Luke the thing that really, really struck me is towards the end. When an unclean spirit goes out of someone, it roams through arid regions searching for rest, but finds none. And it says, upon its return, everything is swept clean. Made me think of reconciliation. We go to reconciliation, that's what we want to be, swept clean. We have that beautiful gift in the Catholic Church of reconciliation that we do need to take advantage of often. But... As soon as that reconciliation is done, as soon as your prayers the priest have given you have finished, then what? That's where the seven other spirits have the opportunity for flight into your life. We need to guard against that. And I think so many times people, especially younger kids, will come up to me and they'll say, well, Deacon Chris, I go to reconciliation, but I don't feel any different. Uh-oh. <laughs> but that's okay, because those big kids do that from time to time, too. Those prayers that the priest gives you, use those to ward off anything that is bad that can come in, and then act on that. And what I mean by that is, if you clean up a room, and you just start throwing your toys back in there, your dirty socks or dirty clothes back in there, the room's not clean anymore. Well, it's the same thing with your, your heart, yourself, and your spirit. We need to keep that area clean. And to do that, we need to keep Jesus Christ first. Our Lord and Savior gives us all sorts of tools to use to keep ourselves clean, our houses clean. One of the best things would be the Gospels that we find in these books. Your Bible. Read your Bible. Use those Ten Commandments that are given to us. Those are ten hard things to live by, and I realize that. But if we can do that, we're well on our way to keeping our house clean. We are well on our way to being in the best condition we can be to be with Jesus Christ. And if we can, as we grow not only in age, but in spirit, if we grow closer to Christ, just think how much better it'll be when we meet him face to face. So, not to take a whole lot of your time on this Friday morning, beautiful sunny day, but I want to leave you something to think about. Maybe we could just ask the Lord for something as simple as this little prayer that I read. 
Lord Jesus, be the ruler of my heart, and the master of my home. May there be nothing in my life that is not under your lordship. Let us join together as the body of Christ and offer our prayers to the Father. For the Church, that all her members may be strengthened by the Holy Spirit in the universal call to holiness, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For government leaders, may God guide them in their efforts to protect the dignity and sanctity of life from conception through natural death. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those, who, for those oppressed by sin, may Christ's mercy and forgiveness bring them healing and consolation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us gathered here today, may the Lord bless us and make us holy in his sight. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the repose of the souls of all the deceased, especially those who have been forgotten, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We also pray for all those that we've been asked to pray for in our parish, all the sick. We lift them up to the Lord. For this, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Heavenly Father, we offer our prayers and our hearts to you on this beautiful Friday morning. We ask all of this through your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Please kneel or be seated. Please stand. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver, deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Please kneel or be seated. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord.
Please stand. And let us pray. Lord, we thank you for the nourishment you gave us through your holy gift. Pour out your Spirit upon us, and in the strength of this food from heaven, keep us single-minded in your service. We ask this in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. As you well know, Father Phil's been gone this week. He will be back for regular services tomorrow at 5.15, and then again on Sunday at 8 and 11. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Together we pray the prayer of St. Michael, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. St. Michael. Amen.